Hi there, folks. Today we're looking at frequency and histograms. And so starting this thing off, frequency is basically how often something occurs. If I asked with what frequency do you use your phone, uh, you might say every day or every minute of every day. You would tell me how often you do that thing. Or with what frequency do you have math homework? You would say, oh, once a day. So that would be the frequency, all right? So the number of occurrences for a particular data value or set of values, all right? A frequency table is basically us just organizing that frequency, all right, and displaying the data in a meaningful way. So a frequency table, we're going to split the data into groups, so group the data values into intervals, all right, and then we're going to show the, the frequency of each interval. And again, we're just organizing the data based on, on groups, so uh, lumping certain data values together, and then we're going to display the frequency of each of those groups, okay? And uh, one thing you have to note, uh, the intervals can't overlap and there can't be gaps. So I can't have one interval that goes from like one to five and then the next interval goes from like seven, you know, to uh, 12 or something like that. All right, we have to keep the data values consistent in terms of their size and we can't have a gap in between, all right? So if one uh, set goes from like one to three, see that includes three data values, one, two, three, the next set has to start at four and it has to go to six because it's including three data values, four, five, and six, okay? So equal sizes, no gaps in between. A histogram, uh, the last piece of this puzzle, is basically what it looks like when we display a frequency table on a graph, all right? So the graph that displays the data from a frequency table and basically it looks like a bar graph without any spaces in between the bars. All right, that's essentially what this thing will look like. We'll put our frequencies along the x-axis, and then we'll put, uh, sorry, we'll put our intervals along the x-axis, and then we'll put our frequencies along the y-axis. And so each bar will kind of show us the frequency of each interval, of each group of data values, okay? For example, this one says to create a frequency table. And the first thing I have to do here is I have to decide upon an interval of some kind. So what I do is I kind of look for the range of this thing. I see like the smallest data value I, I see is a 2, and it looks like the biggest one I see is a 17, all right? So when you kind of think about how many data values that is, from 2 to 17, if you subtract that, the range is 15, but it actually means that we have 16 data values if you were to count them up, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way to 17, all right? And so you want to kind of take that, and the general rule here is we want somewhere around, you know, four to six data values or around that five mark. Uh, four is a good number. So look for things that divide nicely. If you have some like 15 for the range, it means there's actually 16 data values. So four would be a good interval because it's going to give me four groups. Okay. So I'm going to do an interval of four for this one. And again, one of the things that students have trouble with is... Uh, we tend to miscount this, all right? So here I'm going to do the interval, and here is going to be the frequency. Okay, and that's how the, the frequency table looks, and I did not give myself enough space. Let me try again. Let me take it off to the side over here. There we go. We put our interval over here, and you can label that as the number of home runs or something like that. So now if I'm doing an interval of four, my lowest data value is two. So an interval of four would be two, and the mistake the students make is they say, oh, it's two to six because two plus four is six. But if you think about two to six, count that out. That would be two, three, four, five, and six. And you see how many data values that is? That's five data values. If I want four data values, I would have to go from two to five. Okay? And so, yeah, it looks like we're only adding three. That's because when we add, it's only adding three more on top of the two. So we're forgetting to count the two there. All right? So then the next interval would be six because we can't have any gaps. And it would be six to nine this time. And again, you could count them out. Six, seven, eight. 9 is 4 data values. And I would encourage you to take it off the side and count those out or count them on your fingers, whatever. The next would be 10 to 13. 
and the last one will be 14 to 17, okay? And now I just have to, to, to count them out. So I'm looking for uh, values that are between 2 and uh, 5. So here's a value between 2 and 5. Uh, here's another one, the 5, the 3, and the 4. So it looks like I have four of them, so I put a 4 here, okay? And, you know, you can cross them off as you go. Uh, to kind of help keep you organized, but don't scribble them out so much that you can't read them in case there's a mistake somewhere where you have to go back and check. So now I'm looking for values between six and nine. So I've got this one. Uh, let me underline them from now. This one, this one, this one, and this guy. So one, two, three, four again. And again, the only reason I'm crossing them off now is to kind of make sure I don't count one of those uh, again. Oh, missed the 9. And now between 10 and 13, so that would be the 12, the 10, and the other 12, so that's three of them. And then 14 to, to 17, looks like I have one, two, uh, three of those as well. And that's it. This is a frequency table. It's showing us the data in groups and then showing us how often those occur. And so when you look at this frequency table, hopefully you realize that, that most of the people kind of congregate around those lower numbers. And then you have some of those all-stars that are hitting more home runs because uh, that's what this data is talking about at, at that upper level. Okay. If I look at this one, it says create a relative frequency histogram this time. So I'm going to start off the same way. I'm going to create a frequency table. And again, I have to kind of look at what interval I want to use here. Uh, this one looks like the lowest data value is the 0, and the biggest one is the 22. And so if I think about how many data values that is, it's actually uh, 23 data values, okay? And so, I, again, if I wanted to go somewhere around 4, I would say, okay, 23 divided by 4 is about 6. It's actually less than that, but you want to round up. So I'm going to use an interval of 6. And now I start my uh, frequency table here. And I don't quite need that many spaces. I'm going to put my interval over here, and again, that's the uh, hours of TV. And again, you can label it as such. You know, there's nothing wrong with labeling this. I'm just throwing interval down for now, but maybe I would say this is the hours. So this is the hours of TV, and then this is the frequency. Okay, so give it that context. makes it a little bit easier to read. And so again, if I'm doing intervals of 6, 0 to 5 would be 6 data values. And again, count them off. You know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 6 data values. All right? And then the next interval would be 6 to 11. The next one uh, would be 12 to 17. And then this one would be 18 to 23. And again, you just kind of have to think through that a little bit. Because the interval is 6, you're actually adding 5 each time to get those intervals of 6. Okay, And when you add 5, it gives you 5 more data values on top of the one you started with. Okay, So 6 plus 5 is 11, so including the 6 is 6 data values instead of 5. All right, And now again, we got to start counting these up. So let's see, uh, 0 to 5, here's 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6 data values it looks like. And again, before I move on, I'm just going to put a little mark on those so I don't count them again. And then 6 to 11. Got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Looks like 5 data values. And then uh, 12 to uh, 17. Looks like I have one, two, three data values. And then uh, the last group, I only have one data value left, so it's that guy. Okay. And again, this is my, my frequency uh, table. But now from here, I want to create a histogram. See, I didn't even answer the question yet. It asked me to draw a histogram. So histogram, this is the easy part. We're just going to draw essentially what looks like a bar graph. 
and I'm gonna put my intervals down here. And I, I'm gonna go a little bit on a slant with these just so uh, I can fit the data values a little bit better. As I label them, you can write them horizontally and that's fine, okay? But I just knew I was gonna run out of space. And so we're kind of marking off these intervals now instead. And then over here, we just put the, the frequency. So maybe I'll go one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, okay? And so if I look at that first interval, the first interval had a value of uh, six, and I was just going by ones here for those dash marks. But I come up here and say, okay, I draw the bar six units high for that interval. The next interval is five, so I draw that bar five units high. The next one is three, so I draw that bar three units high, and then the last one is one, so I draw a bar that's one unit high. That's it, okay? That's a, that's a histogram, all right? Essentially, we're just converting that frequency table into a bar graph, but that bar graph has no spaces because the intervals touch one another. That's it. When we're interpreting histograms, we have a couple different situations that we'll run into. <clears throat> uh, we would say a, a histogram is uniform when each bar is relatively the same height. So if they're all pretty much the same, we say it's uniform. We say it's symmetric if basically the thing is symmetrical. If you can cut this thing in half and each half looks identical, all right? Usually with symmetric uh, histograms, we'll see the, the high, uh, the peak in the center, all right? Uh, we say it's skewed when basically it's not symmetrical and the peak is shifted to one side or the other, all right? So that's when the thing would be skewed. So uniform, they're all basically the same. Symmetric is when you can cut it in half and each half is identical. And skewed is when the, the center is kind of shifted off to one side, all right? For example, if I look at these guys... If I'm marking each of these as either uniform, symmetric, or skew, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but when we look at this first, uh, this first graph, they are all pretty much about the same. Yeah, two of them are a little bit higher, but most of them are pretty close to being about the same, so we'd say this one is uniform. If I look at this guy, we've got a, a peak in the center, and as we spread out from there, we have like a lower one and then another lower one. And yeah, there's a slight difference between these guys. So it's not exactly symmetrical, but in general, so we're generalizing the symmetry here. In general, this one looks fairly symmetrical, so we would say it's symmetric. And then this one, and you see this kind of looks like the symmetric one, except instead of being, having that high point in the middle, it's shifted off to one side. It, it grows like the symmetrical one does, but then it shrinks on one side more than the other. So this one, because that, that high point is not in the center, this one is skewed. Okay? The last thing we're going to look at here is a cumulative frequency table. An accumulative frequency table is basically the same thing that we were just doing, except we tack one more thing onto our frequency table. So we'll start off kind of like a regular frequency table, all right, and then go from there. So here's the number of text messages sent in one hour. And again, I kind of have to look at the, the, the highest and the lowest values here. I got zero for the lowest and it uh, looks like 49 for the highest. And so when we're looking at that, that's 50 data values, all right? So maybe, <clears throat> instead of going with something like 4, because 50 is divisible into 5, maybe I'll go with 5 groups this time. If I divide that by 5, that would give me an interval of 10. Okay? And so I want groups that kind of work out nicely here, and these ones will, all right? So again, I'm going to start off with just a regular frequency table, and then you're going to see me tack on another, uh, another column here. So these are the number of text messages. This is the frequency. And again, I'm going to start off the same way. So let's see, 0 to 9 would be 10 data values, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, and 40 to 49, okay? 
And now I start counting up the frequency. So let's see, uh, 0 to 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, looks like. And again, if I find out at the end that maybe I made a mistake and missed one of these, I can easily go back and change that number because I'm keeping a, a tally here, all right? Uh, then 10 to 19, let's see, that's 1, 2, 3, it looks like 3. And again, we'll fix it at the end if we missed any. 20 to 29, 1, 2, 3, it looks like. Uh, 30 to 39. 1, 2, looks like I got two of them. And then 40 to 49, it looks like there's two left. 1, 2, okay? And I've crossed all these off, so I don't think I've missed any. That's a frequency table, a cumulative frequency table. We're just going to add another column onto this thing. So here's the cumulative frequency. We just keep a running tally. So from 0 to 9, there was 8 uh, text messages. Um, or eight uh, values in that group, so the frequency is eight. So right now, my frequency is eight. And then once I include the 10 to 19 category, there are three more added to the frequency. So now I have a total frequency of 11. And so I'm just tacking it on. And then the next category adds three more to that total, so that's 14. And then the next category adds two more to that total, so that's 16. And then the last category adds two more, so that's 18. It's just keeping a rel of running tally of, how, of what the frequency is in total for all the groups so far. And one nice thing about this is you can easily go back through, count up the data values, and it should equal whatever this last number is, the 18. Okay. So again, frequency is how often it occurs. When we do a frequency table, we split it into intervals. Be really careful as you count out those intervals in terms of the number of data values. All right. The frequency, we just tally up how many fall in that group. The cumulative frequency, we keep a running tally. And then a histogram is basically looks like a bar graph where the bars are touching, but it's the conversion of a frequency table into a graph. Okay?